Hi everyone. So today we want to discuss the remaining OOP concepts, the key concepts of object oriented programming languages. Before going to discuss, so what are the contents covered last two classes? So this is the syllabus. Then what is C++? Course objectives of the C++. Then these are the course outcomes of the C++. Then introduction. So next one differences between C and C++. Evolution of C++. So developed by C++. John Strostrup. John Strostrup developed by C++. All of you. Then so these are the evolutions of C++ ERC language features and similar language features extracted. Then those two language features combined into a single unit that is called C with classes. Then uh, C with classes and all goal 68 features added. Then these con these uh, two concepts added and the resultant language is called C++. So these are the evolutions of C++. Before the evolution of C++, then uh, the evolution of C language also available. Then Algol, BCPL, B language, then um, C language, next one ANSI C language, and the next one NCC and OSI C language. Then the next one C and similar language. Then these two features, C language and similar language features are extracted. Then those features combined, then the resultant language is C with classes. That's why here C++ is an extension of the C language. Extension of the C language. Then Algol 68 and after some time, after some time, the Algol 68 and the C with classes, these two features combined into a single unit that is called single language that is called C++ language. These are the evolutions of C language. Then object oriented technology, last class object oriented technology. We can call object oriented technology as problem solving methodology or an approach to carry out software engineering activities. Then object oriented technology is the approach to solve the real world object problem. I gave example uh, college uh, educational institutions. Then there are two departments. I gave example previous class. Then there are two departments, uh, teaching and non-teaching. Then monitoring one uh, either director or uh, principal is overall organizer. Uh, principal and directors are the overall organizers. Then uh, each department communicating to the other departments. Already we discussed in last class. Then in the classroom then library and computer lab these two are these three departments combined all the features and i mean here data and functions are combined combined linked linked bonding of these three departments then organizing one person is the head of the institution and also same thing in the uh, object oriented technology all object oriented technologies as a problem solving methodology are an approach to carry out software engineering activities. In object oriented technologies, the approach to solve a real world object problem. The classes are going well or not identifies who identifies the department heads. Then the all departments are going well or not who identifies then your principal identifies. Then the what are the financial status, then salaries, etc. Who identifies? Then the director and administrator, officer, administrative, officer identifies. So we are using object oriented technologies. Here object oriented technologies, the approach to solve the real world problem, then smooth going, smooth going of the smooth going functionalities of the institution, department, organization, etc. These are the, this is the object oriented technology. Then these are the uh, disadvantages. These are the disadvantages of conventional programming. These are the disadvantages of conventional programming. The following are the drawbacks observed in monolithic procedure and structured programming languages. Here monolithic programming language, then there is no reusability of the code. 
then in procedure then simply then there is no functions in monolithic then in procedure oriented programming language then the entire program can be divided into modules the first drawback is huge programs are divided into smaller programs known as functions these functions can call one another and security is not provided no importance is given to security of data and importance is laid on doing things this is the another drawback data passes globally from function to function so this is another drawback why because then there is no security to provide the data in object procedure oriented programming languages most functions access global data then the key then the next concept is uh, key concepts of object oriented programming language these are the major concepts of object oriented programming language already uh, yesterday we discussed class and object in the concepts then we want to discuss object uh, abstraction we want to discuss abstraction here before going to discuss abstraction then what is a class then what is an object remember one thing so here class is an abstract data type simply class is nothing but a collection of collection of members and member functions these four are the members this these are the members then here integer number name etc salary then these four are the four five four four integer employee number name designation and salary these four are the members of this class and get data and put data are the member functions of this class simply a class is nothing but a collection of members and member functions so that is the simple definition of a class another definition the original definition is class is an abstract data type that contains member var variables and member functions real all of you understood so your class is a collection of members these four are the members and member functions and member functions that contain this is an abstract data type remember all of you then that contains member values and member functions that operate on data it start with the keyword class a class denoted a group of similar objects so then there is no limit how many you want you can create create freely so this is the class syntax employee class employee this is the class then employee employee is a user defined name whatever you want you can give the class name should not be a keyword otherwise no problem you can give user defined name then the next one integer employee number then character name of 25 designation 25 then float salary and these are the members then these two are the member functions then here public what is public so then in c++ there are three kinds of access visibilities available those are called access specifiers or visibilities the first one is private visibility second one is protected visibility and the third one is public visibility so by default is private visibility we no need to design we no need to define private by default is private visibility so employee number name designation salary these are the private members of this employee class these members we can use inside the class only then how to define a private member how to define a private member here simply private keyword then colon private colon integer employee number then character name of 25 designation 25 float salary etc these four members of this class are private members private private members so these four are the private members here then public members private members we can use inside the function only then there is no permissions to allow outside the classes all of you inside the class inside the function only so then here public visibility once we have to define the variables and methods in publicly we can use the variables and methods inside the class and and other side outside of the class inside the class and outside of the class 
then there is a protected variable one so we have to define the protected variables protected variables are protected members those variables and members are acting inside the class is protectedly then outside the class is acting as privately that is protected variables how to define protected variables here protected protected then colon this is the keyword protected private protected and public these three are called access specifiers are visibility modes visibility modes in c++ in detail later we will discuss and simply class is nothing but collection of members and member functions remember so this is same as structure in c language structure is a user defined data type so whereas in structures we can define various types of various types of different different data items in a structure here simply that's why that is called user defined data type we can store all kinds of data like all kinds of data means integer values float values character values then etc so these all kinds of values we can store into a single unit we should go through we should go through structures in c language here c++ but then uh, structures in c language structure contains only members but not member functions whereas in c++ class contains members and member functions okay then the next concept is object next concept is object what is an object so here object is an instance of the class object is an instance of the class an instance of a class it is a variable that represents data as well as functions required for operating on the data the interact with private data and functions through public functions okay object example employee e1 and e2 where in structures a structure name then variable 1 variable 2 so on variable n here also class name variable 1 variable 2 so on variable and how many value and how many variables you want to define you can define then there is no restriction in creating in c++ to create objects okay then here employee e1 and e2 in the above example employee is the class name okay and e1 and e2 are objects of the class next one is abstraction abstraction refers to the process of concentrating on the most essential features and ignoring the details there are two types of abstractions the first one is procedural abstraction second one is data abstraction here procedural abstraction refers to the process of using user defined functions or library functions to perform a certain task special kind of task without knowing the inner details without knowing the inner details the function should be treated as a black box the details of the body of the function are hidden from the user procedural abstractions like functions or procedures so then user defined functions or library functions procedural abstractions I simply function is a self contained block of statements how many types of functions there are two types of functions the first one is called user defined functions and the second one is called predefined functions predefined functions are also known as library functions the user defined functions created by a user and the library functions provide the software c++ software c software then java software etc these are the types of library functions uh, functions these are the types of functions then the next one data abstraction data abstraction refers to the process of information of user defined data type from different predefined data types so data abstraction refers to the process of formation of user defined data types based on our declaration of class and our our requirements of the uh, our requirements of the problem our requirements of the problem we want to define types of variables for example i want to define a structure variable i mean student record that i want to store students data what are the fields of the student here first one is student register number student name then the year of the study and next one semester then the next one marks in the marks 
then uh, various subjects available subject 1 marks subject 2 marks subject 3 marks subject 4 subject 5 total marks average marks and grade these are all the fields these are all the data fields variables data members based on the requirement based on the project based on the record we will define data variables so these function uh, data variables here predefined data types different predefined data types here integer variable so then characters float etc these are all the predefined data types using these data types so based on our requirement if for example if then there is a student number according to our university register number that is alphanumeric data that is character then the name that is also character next integer marks total subject marks subject 1 marks integer subject 2 marks integers then and uh, etc n subjects integers so then average marks then that is a float then the next one is a percentile that is also float division grade so then these are all the various kinds of data types we will apply in classes we will define in the classes we will use in member functions next one is encapsulation this is the most 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 important concept this is the most most important concept in object oriented programming languages encapsulation object based programming language the javascript already we discussed so encapsulation does not support in javascript okay whereas in c++ then java language encapsulation supports encapsulation is the most important thing in the in the object oriented programming language simply what is encapsulation 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 is the process of continuing data members continuing uh, combining data members encapsulation is the process of combining data members and member functions into a single unit so as a class in order to hide the internal operations of the class and to support abstraction that is called encapsulation so the process of combining data members and member functions so which one is the the combination of the linkage of data members and data functions member functions member functions and data members linking bonding then attaching the single unit that is called object of the class that's a single unit as a class in order to hide the internal operations of the class and to support abstraction so already we discussed class class is nothing but collection of members and member functions so in the encapsulation means the process of combining data members and member functions into a single class so whereas in a defining object we can call the data we can call the member functions through object the data assigned into objects the data is assigned into objects in order to hide the internal operations of the class simply to hide the internal operations the data will store into the objects will go and insert into the objects and to support abstractions all of you clear and to support abstractions the abstractions here procedural and data abstractions next concept is data hiding next concept is data hiding what is data hiding all the data in a class can be restricted from using it by giving some access levels those are called visibility modes these the the, the three access levels are private public and protected here simply private data and functions are available to the public functions only they cannot be accessed by the other part of the program already we discussed here private members once we have to define private members and member functions in the class we can use inside the function only that is publicly public functions only remember they cannot be accessed by the other part of the program so we cannot access other side of the class clear the process of hiding private data and functions from the other part of the program is called as data hiding so the process of hiding private data and functions from the other part of the program is called as data hiding these three bonding with an object 
the data will assign into the object that is called data hiding that is secret to store okay clear next one is inheritance what is an inheritance so so inheritance simply the sixth concept is inheritance what is inheritance you are deriving a new class is deriving the data from the old one a new one is deriving the data from the old one a new class is deriving the data from the old class a child is getting money from the parent a child getting money from the parent then inheritance inheritance in the inheritance concepts inheritance concepts inheritance is the process of acquiring getting the properties of some other class the class whose properties are being inherited is called as base class and the class which is getting the properties is called as derived class this is base class then this is derived class a derived class this is the child class this is the base class this is the derived from data from the base class base class is not derived the data from the child class derived class all of you this is new class this is old class our our parent is senior we are juniors yes or no then your child child getting pocket money from his parent parent is old then child is young new one so your derived class is a new class and base class is a old class a derived class deriving the data from the base class deriving the data from the base class this is called inheritance there are various types of inheritance available later we will discuss single inheritance multiple inheritance multi level inheritance then hybrid inheritance etc these are all the inheritances what are the inheritances what are the examples of the inheritances where we where where we can apply inheritances later we will discuss the next one is the reusability reusability using <coughs> reusability is using the already existing code is called as reusability already existing code so using again and again that is called reusability then for example i want to uh, define a function the same function i am using again and again again and again but the input variables are different input data is different but the function name is same but the code is same but the sending arguments are different again i want to call the same function again and again the same statements executing again and again that is called reusability using the already existing code once we have to write then the same code we we are using again and again to execute that is called reusability this is mostly used in inheritance the already existing code is inherited to the new class it saves a lot of time and effort it also reduces the size of the program that is the advantage of reusability no need to write the same code again and again it simply uh, reduce the program size at while writing time and time and program size then uh, same code we will use again and again that is called reusability next one is polymorphism this is the most most important polymorphism most important concept polymorphism here polymorphism means poly this is a greek word polymorphism is a greek word here poly means many morphism means forms many forms here poly polymorphism means the ability to, to take many forms polymorphism means the ability to take many forms polymorphism allows to take different implementations for same name polymorphism allows diff different implementations for same name here different different functions same name with same name but only the difference is sending arguments only the difference first function here for example sum of a sum of int then the second function sum of int comma float third function sum of int comma int then the function names are same but the sending arguments are the arguments are different clear so this type of concept is called function overloading so here polymorphism means the ability to take many forms 
volume of some allows to take different implementations for same name different implementations different function names with the same name okay the functions are different but the name is same but the sending arguments are different later we will discuss here volume means many mops and means forms there are two types of volume mops the first one is compile time volume mops and the second one is runtime volume mops in compile time volume mops binding is done at compile time and in runtime volume mops binding is done at runtime here compile time volume mops is also known as early binding the runtime volume mops is also known as late binding so run runtime volume mops and compile time volume mops the compile time volume mops is also known as early binding pre execution before executing the program what are the errors what are the matches then it can matches all addresses functions variables then object then it can matches all these things what are the changes occur in the compile time that is called uh, that is called compile time volume option what are the changes occur in run time that is called uh, run time volume option program execution execution time changes occurred then compile time changes occurred so here compile time and run time volume options run time volume option is also known as late binding or dynamic binding here compile time by uh, compile time volume option is also known as early binding or static binding remember all of you a static binding early binding then late binding or dynamic binding okay here types of volume options there are two types of volume options the first one is compile time second one is runtime volume options later we will discuss in the third unit okay volume option fourth unit volume option in compile time volume option binding is done at compile time and in runtime volume option binding is done at runtime examples function overloading and operator overloading function overloading operator overloading okay clear here function overloading function overloading is a part of volume option same function name having a different implementation with a different number and type of arguments different number and type of arguments remember function overloading is a part of volume option same function name having different implementations then there are more functions but the function names are same with different number and type of arguments here sum of int sum of int comma float sum of int comma float comma character sum of float comma float then these function names are same that is called sum common name but arguments are different okay sending and receiving arguments are different next one is operator overloading here operator overloading is a part of volume option same operator can have different implementations with different data types here also operator overloading then later we will discuss then same operator can have different implementations here plus operator then sum of integer a here prefixed with operator that is called plus operator sum of integer a integer comma float then plus operator integer comma sum of int comma int comma int then plus operator sum of int comma int comma int comma int these are all the member functions the common name and the arguments are different data types arguments are different so operator overloading how it will work later we will discuss in runtime volume option then the next concept is the virtual functions this is the virtual function this is the ninth concept ninth key concept in object oriented programming languages virtual functions are special type of functions which are defined in the base class and are redefined in the derived class when virtual function is called with a base pointer and a derived object then the derived class function will be called a function can be defined as virtual by placing the keyword virtual for the member function here then there is a keyword virtual keyword so a function can be defined as virtual by placing the keyword virtual for the member function the function uh, we want to define function we, virtual function we should using 
virtual keyword and function name here virtual functions are spe special type of functions clear which are defined in the base class and are redefined in the derived classes base class and redefined in the derived classes later we will discuss okay <coughs> then the next one message passing an object oriented program contains a set of objects set of objects that communicate that communicate with one another the process of object oriented programming contains the basic steps here message passing passing the values passing the messages from one object to another object from one object to another object how to how to pass the messages from one object to another object so an object oriented program contains a set of objects set of objects that communicate with one another those objects communicate with one another the process of object oriented programming contains the basic steps so first one is creating classes second one is creating objects and third one is communication among objects third one is communication among objects first of all we should create a class then the next one we should create an object then there is a class we can create an object then there is no class then there is no possibility to create an object once we have to define a class we will go to create an object then the class and objects are there then we can communicate among class and objects clear all of you class and objects then there is a class then there is an object then we will create communication among objects this communication is done with the help of functions passing objects to functions so these are the these are the uh, key concepts of object oriented programming languages these are the key concepts of object oriented programming languages these are the key concepts of object oriented programming languages all of you remember these are the keywords only no need to worry about it if you have uh, if you understand or not remember so these keywords repeating again and again until our syllabus is complete when the syllabus is complete all these key concepts covered okay remember all of you i will explain each and every key concept in every day in every class no bother no bothering about it okay please keep keywords only keep keywords in your mind remember all of you oh. advantages of oops object oriented language advantages object oriented language provides many advantages to the programmer and use to solve many problems related to the software development and provides improved quality and low cost these programs can be easily upgraded first advantage using inheritance we can avoid writing the redundant code and reuse already existing code reusability is there already discussed in concepts of the oops then the second third advantage is it allows design des designing and developing safe programs using the data hiding while using data hiding concept we will design the programs and develop the programs in safe mode then fourth one using the encapsulation features of wo we can define we can define new class with many functions and only few functions can be exposed to the user using encapsulation methods we can define new classes then inheritance concepts like next one that is also one of the advantages in oops all the object oriented programming language allows creating extended and reusable reusable parts of the programs so we can extend the reusable programs reusable code expose it to the user functions here simply the functions and only few functions can be exposed to the 
user using the encapsulation features of oops we can define new classes with many functions as only few functions can be exposed to the users that is the fourth advantage then the fifth advantage all the oops language allows creating extended and reusable parts of the programs we can create new parts new functions then we can extend the program then there is no restriction then based on the requirements of the user we can extend or we can decrease the program all the oops object oriented programming languages allows creating and extending extended and reusable parts of the program it changes the thinking of the programmer and results in rapid development of the software in a short time then objects communicate with each other and pass messages and pass messages these are all the advantages of object oriented programming languages these are all the advantages of object oriented programming languages then the applications of oops what are the applications of object oriented programming languages as they will ask you two marks questions what are the applications of oops applications here c++ <coughs> promising areas of applications of oops include the promising areas of applications of oops include real time systems simulation and modeling object oriented databases hypertext hypermedia and expert text ai and expert systems ai and expert systems neural networks and parallel programming decision support and automation systems and cim cam cad systems etc these are all the applications of the oops we can use we can implement your oops concepts in these applications your real time systems first one second one is simulation and modeling third one is object oriented databases fourth one is hypertext so hypermedia and expert text fifth one is ai and expert systems sixth one neural networks and parallel programming seventh one decision support and automation systems eighth one cim cam cad systems etc these applications used in designing mechanical civil cad cam and designing softwares they are using to design the systems okay then these are all the applications in object oriented programming languages then object oriented languages what are the object oriented languages here significant object oriented languages include java c++ c# hash, python r php visual basic .net javascript ruby perl object pascal object to see dart swift scala kotlin common lisp matlab and small talk these are all the object oriented programming languages these are all the object oriented programming language all of you so then this is the last concept in our first unit syllabus then uh, i want to remember today class re remember today class then simply here what are the key concepts of what are the key concepts of object oriented programming language what are the key concepts simply <coughs> there are 10 key concepts then the 10 key then object oriented concepts available in c++ the first one is class second one is object third one is abstraction fourth one is mm, encapsulation fifth one is data and data hiding sixth one is inheritance seventh one is reusability eighth one is polymorphism ninth one is virtual functions and tenth one is message passing here simply what is class class is nothing but what is class class is nothing but a collection of members and member functions class is nothing but a collection of members and member functions what is an object an object is a variable of the class or an instance of the class what is an object a variable of the class 
or an instance of a class that is called an object. Next one is abstraction. Abstraction refers to the process of uh, concentrating on the most essential features and ignoring the details. There are two types of abstractions. The first one is called procedural abstraction and the second one is data abstraction. Here procedural abstraction refers to the process of using user-defined functions or library functions. Then data abstractions refers to the process of formation of user-defined data types from, oh, from different predefined data types. Uh, next one is the encapsulation. This is the most important one in C++. Here encapsulation is the all the data in the class can be restricted from using it by giving some access levels. The three uh, access levels are private, public, protected. Then there are three types of visibilities available in data encapsulation. Those are called private, public, sorry, data hiding. Data encapsulation, sorry, sir. Here data encapsulation, uh, encapsulation is the process of combining data members and member functions into a single unit, a single unit as a class. That is data encapsulation. Then data hiding, data hiding, all the data in class can be restricted from using it by giving some access levels. So those are called visibility modes. There are three kinds of visibility modes. First one is private then public and protected. These three are the visibility modes. Then once we have to define privately data and members, we can use inside the function only. Once we have to define publicly, we can use the data members and member functions inside the class and outside the class. Once we have to define the members in protected visibility, we have to access inside the class protectedly then outside the class, those protected variables acting as private. So these three are the visibilities in data hiding. Okay, so this is the most important one, data hiding. So C++ supports data hiding concepts, whereas in C, C, C does not support data hiding. Clear? Then the next one is inheritance. Inheritance is the process of acquiring the properties of some other classes. Simply inheritance deriving the data from the base class. A new class is deriving the data from the base class. A child is getting pocket money from his parent. The parent class is called base class and the child, the student is the child class. Okay. Then the next one is reusability. Reusability using using Already existing code is called the reusability. Using the already existing code is called reusability. This is mostly used in inheritance. The already existing code is inherited to the new class. It saves a lot of time and efforts. It also reduces the size of the program. Saving of time and reducing the program. Here code complexity and time complexity. This is the most important. It saves reusability. Then polymorphism. Here polymorphism means the ability to take many forms. The ability to take many forms. There are two types of polymorphism. The first one is compile time polymorphism. And the second one is runtime polymorphism. Then here runtime polymorphism. Simply examples. Function overloading is a runtime polymorphism. Then operator overloading. Uh, examples for function uh, polymorphism, function overloading and operator overloading. Here compile time polymorphism and runtime polymorphism. What are the changes occur in the compilation time that is called compile time polymorphism. What are the changes occur in program execution time that is called runtime polymorphism. Compile time polymorphism is also known as early binding or static binding. Then runtime polymorphism is also known as late binding or uh, 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 dynamic binding, dynamic binding. Yeah, then the next one, uh, next one, polymorphs, virtual functions. Virtual functions are special type of functions which are defined in the base class and are redefined in the derived class. So we will uh, discuss in the last unit virtual functions. Next one, last one is the message passing. 
An object oriented program contains a set of objects that communicate with one another. The process of object oriented programming contains the basic steps. So first one, we want to create classes. Then second one, creating objects. Then after creating classes and objects, then we will communicate among objects. Communicating among objects. Then there is a bonding between class and objects. Clear. Then there is no class. Then there is, uh, it, is, it is possible to create an object. No. If there is a class, we can create an object. Otherwise, we cannot create an object. So then the, these are the uh, key concepts of the object-oriented programming language. Then these are the advantages of the object-oriented programming languages. So then these are the applications of the object-oriented programming languages. Then these are the object-oriented programming languages. Object-oriented languages. These are all the object-oriented languages. Then tomorrow we will meet. Thank you. Thank you.